one of my teaching philosophies has always been, look, there are some fundamental things that you have to master. Um, and whether that's in a, in a deposition skill or a trial or whatever it is. And then once you master those fundamentals, from there, you should craft your story of your case around the case. Because, you know, not every single story is going to fit for every single case, nor should it. How about the courtroom setup? How did you? Uh, that, Michael, this was, the, this was the thing that gave me a lot of sleepless nights. Because so they put the jurors in the gallery all spread out. The two alternates were in the very back of the courtroom. What they did then was they had two huge screens that were set up on each side of the, of the gallery. The witness was in the jury box, in the, like the middle of the jury box. And then, you know, the judge, so the judge is here, witness is over here, jury's way over here. And um, so, you know, as I was saying before, one of the things that we've worked so hard on over the years is, you know, the best thing that you have in a courtroom is you in terms of your body presence and your voice and your and your movement and making that connection with the, you know, with the jury. And being there with them, guiding them through the, you know, this trial. Couldn't do any of that because, you know, now I'm now I'm 80 feet away from. You know, the juror who's in the, you know, in the back of the back of the courtroom. Um, probably the most difficult thing was sidebars. Uh-huh. Uh, so <laughs> we had the social distance at sidebar. So if you were asking questions, you were allowed to have your mask off. And then when you went up the sidebar, the judge wanted you to have your mask back on. So now if you can imagine the judge and then the defense lawyers are at the one side of the bench and then the bench kind of like cuts off where the traditional witness stand would be. And then the court reporter was there. So the court reporter would basically go into the witness box. And then I ended up having to I ended up having to sit like side saddle on the, <laughs> on the railing in front so that the judge could hear me. And we'd be social distanced and could hear the defense and then they would be able to have the appropriate, you know, appropriate white noise. So that was, you know, that was, uh, you know, really, you know, really unique. Um, but the case tried really well. I mean, it just everything went in pretty smoothly. And again, I think it was because, you know, we really worked super hard on um, making sure that every single thing had some corresponding visual that the jury could be able to see and take, you know, and had a, and had a real, you know, take, you know, takeaway on it. Um, but uh, I tell you, we walked on eggshells every day because the judge told us, um, you know, before the trial, look, if anybody comes in the next day and they, they test positive or their family members test positive, it's a mistrial. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I mean, you know, you, you, you put a lot of time, energy and money uh, into the, you know, into these cases. And, and you know, we spared no expense because it was a, you know, it was a big case uh, and we treated it as such. No, they were just good people. They were just nice people. They were kind people. Um, and, and none of them had an axe, you know, none of them had an axe to grind. And I, I think we just, you know, uh, we got a little bit lucky. We had just people that were willing to serve and, and, and we're okay with it. And we did the hard work beforehand so that we put ourselves in the best possible position to be successful for our client. And, you know, fortunately, uh, you know, fortunately we were. For people that are wondering, you know, should I push a case to trial during COVID or should I wait till everyone's vaccinated and we're back to, to normal or the new normal, whatever it's going to be uh, because they're scared about the uncertainty. What message Oh, yeah. You know, I say do it. Um, and the reason I say do it is, look, it's it is scary uh, and it is frightening. And but we, you know, we also have a job to do um, and we have clients to represent and those clients need us. And, and a lot of times, you know, their financial futures are riding on us. 
And if we just focus on the uncertainty and the scariness of COVID, um, then I don't think that we're doing our job uh, as lawyers and advocates, you know, for them. I think it you got to do it and you really got to focus and you've got to work, you know, four times harder than you do for a normal, normal trial. Um, but if you if you put in that work and do it, I think that, um, you know, you can overcome that uncertainty and, you know, those uneasy feelings and that, you know, how how really scary it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that.